Well, native art is also on the silver screen. A growing number of Native American filmmakers are making their mark across the nation. I was there at the debut of the new Trail of Tears film in Tahlequah. The Cherokees are nearly all prisoners. They've been dragged from their houses and encamped at the forts and military posts all over the nation. In Georgia, especially, multitudes were allowed no time at all to take anything with them except the clothes they had on. Their well-furnished houses were left a prey to plunderers who, like hungry wolves, followed in the train of the captors. It's one of our country's darkest moments. Surrounded by a group of crying, terrified children, without a friend to speak a consoling word, I, they are prisoners, without a crime to justify the fact. The forced removal of native peoples in the southeastern U.S. to Oklahoma, a deadly journey known as the Trail of Tears. It's not a pretty picture about America, and it's a picture that needs to be seen and told. Which is why Chip Ritchie and his filmmaking partner Stephen Heap began work on a movie that for the first time documents on film stories passed down for generations. You know, telling the story of, the, of our ancestors that couldn't tell what really happened, there was very little documentation. I hope 50 years from now, 100 years from now, when people are still wanting to learn about the Trail of Tears, that this will be a resource that they can come to. In partnership with the Cherokee Nation, the filmmakers began shooting in June of 2004 on a film both acted and produced by Cherokees. Actor Wes Studi hosts the film in his native Cherokee tongue. And rather than open in a larger venue, the film's producers chose to premiere their film Where the Trail of Tears Ended and the Cherokee Nation now calls home. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the show. You can't tell the story of the Trail of Tears without telling the story of Tahlequah. Uh, the people of Tahlequah have been absolutely terrific in their support of this film. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them. We had hundreds of volunteers come out to reenact those last miles of the trail when we shot here last, uh, last June. Which was no easy feat. Shot in the sweltering heat of an Oklahoma summer, all the actors were dressed like winter. Susan Stacy was in charge of making everyone look authentic. Dirty around the collars and around the sleeves, and dirt on the face. Um, women having perfect manicures isn't going to work. You know, trying to get them to get their hands in the dirt and, and do that. And it was very difficult, I think, for some of the younger people that are used to looking good to try and make them look, you know, a little more ragged. As the final credits rolled, those who had been in the film were recognized for their work. But I felt like it was done as close as they could. You know, we wasn't all there, but we did what they, we, we thought had happened, you know. And gave at least some a reason to smile. Wayne Mitchell played President Andrew Jackson, who, despite a Supreme Court order to the contrary, Go home, he advised Ridge, and tell your people that their only hope of relief is in abandoning their country and removing to the West. Threw the Cherokees off their native land. I'm not pleased necessarily with obviously what he did, but at the same time the character needed to be portrayed and uh, it might as well be a Cherokee doing it. Maybe he'll roll over his grave. Making this film premiere a proud moment for not just the filmmakers, but an entire people. Yeah.